Hi and welcome back to another Mr. Talk Maths video. This week's problem is all about finding out what the question mark is when we're told the total area of the shape is 50. Now the key assumption that you need to know is that there are four right angles in the center of this shape just so that you have got a quarter circle and you have got the base and perpendicular height of the right angled triangle there. If you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now. Otherwise, I'm going to show you my solution in three, two, one. OK, so the first thing that I would do with this is start to put on some labels. So I'm going to label this A and I'm going to label this side B, label this C. Now, the other side for this right angle triangle, well, if we look to the bottom left of the shape, we've got a quarter circle um, because I've explained earlier we've got this right angle in the shape which means if it's a quarter circle this other side that I haven't labeled yet must also be a right angle so this must also sorry must also be a radius so this must also be a not a right angle so both sides are radii of the quarter circles so they're both a now from there what you can do is you can start to work out some of these areas and because they're well, three of the areas we're given are equal to A, we can get some equations which are equal to A by working out the areas of the shapes. So starting off with a rectangle, A is equal to A times B. And the area of the triangle, we have got that A is equal to a half of A times C. And the ellipse, now the top right is an ellipse and it is something you might not notice straight away, but the key part is that the top of the shape, top of that curve, the top right shape is uh, horizontal and the, the right hand or the other side, the other end point of that curve is perfectly vertical, which tells me that that can't be the sector of a circle. It must be an ellipse because we've got the top and the right hand side of that shape. And so if we were to basically repeat four of that shape, we'd end up with this shape, which is an ellipse. Um, now the formula for working out the area of an ellipse and therefore then a quarter of the ellipse, um, well if we, if we take that away and we've got this x and y here <coughs> and they both meet at what would what you might call the center of the ellipse, um, the formula for the ellipse therefore is pi xy, so pi times x times y. Now that x and that y, in terms of what we've got, are the b and the c. And so to work out the area of that quarter ellipse, we're going to do a quarter times by pi times b times c. Okay. But that's a new formula which they don't teach you in school and you might not be aware of before. So the area of an ellipse is pi times xy, where x and y are the height from the centre um, and then the distance left or right also from the centre of the ellipse. OK, so let's tidy this up. We'll get rid of the ellipse and we're going to rearrange some of these formulae just so that we can substitute into each other quite nicely and basically cancel out some of the variables. Right. Rearranging the rectangle, rectangle formula, we get that B is equal to capital A, so the area A divided by the length A. And rearranging the triangle formula, we get that C is equal to 2 times the area A over the length A. Now what we can do, and the reason why I did that, is so I can substitute into the ellipse formula and I can basically remove uh, the B and the C. I'll have everything then in terms of lowercase a. So let's do that. And we get this. And we're then going to simplify this and we get the area A is equal to a quarter pi times 2 capital A squared over lowercase a squared. And simplifying that we get this. So 2 times capital A squared pi over 4 lowercase a squared. Now at the moment I've got capital A's on both sides. I want to basically simplify it. I want to get the capital A's onto one side. I want to collect them all together. So let's tidy the screen up again. And we're going to simplify this. And there's a couple of ways you could do this, but I'm going to simplify it like this. So I'm going to cancel the 2 and the 4. So it's leaving me with 2 on the denominator. And then I'm going to multiply by the denominator. And I'm going to cancel the A on both sides. What I'm then going to do to get the capital A by itself, as the subject of the formula is divide both sides by pi. 
And so I get capital A is equal to this. And the reason I wanted everything in terms of capital A is because what I can then do is I've got three capital A's plus the question mark, which I can work out the area of that in terms of lowercase a again, and set that equal to 50. So let's tidy the screen up again. And I've then got 3a plus question mark is equal to 50 because that's basically what I'm told. The total area is 50. Substitute then my a into that equation and I get this. I'm going to simplify that equation by doing 3 times 2 because when I have 3 times a fraction, you multiply the 3 by the, the numerator, the top number. Okay, so we get this. And again, we're going to tidy this all up, clear the screen for us. So we get 6a squared over pi plus a quarter pi a squared is equal to 50. We're going to factorise the a squared out because both things have got a squared in them. I'm going to get this a squared brackets 6 over pi plus a quarter pi is equal to 50. And we're going to simplify this bracket now. Now, essentially what I'm doing here is I'm going to times the left hand fraction by 4 top and bottom and the right hand fraction by pi top and bottom because then they'll both have the denominator of 4 pi and then I can collect the numerators together and I get this a squared brackets 24 plus pi squared over 4 pi is equal to 50 and I'm going to divide the right hand side by this bracket so I just get a squared and the reason I want to just get a squared is because I know when I'm working out the quarter circle the bottom left quarter circle of the original shape I am going to have a quarter pi and then r squared which in this case will be a squared so I want a squared to substitute into that so we get this 50 over and then another fraction on the bottom 24 plus pi squared over 4 pi and I'm going to simplify that by times in top and bottom of this fraction so it's not going to change the value by but I'm going to times top and bottom by 4 pi and that will cancel out the denominator of my denominator so that gives me this 200 pi over 24 plus pi squared. And let's tidy everything up again. So we've got this. A squared is 200 pi over 24 plus pi squared. And the formula for the question mark, well, that's a quarter pi r squared, which in our case is a squared. And we're going to substitute into that the a squared. So a quarter pi and then our a squared um, bracket so that's 200 pi over 24 plus pi squared again and that gives us an exact answer when you multiply everything out we're going to do a quarter of the 200 which is 50 times the numerator by pi so we're going to get 50 pi squared over 24 plus pi squared that's the exact answer for the question mark so well done if you got that and you might have also got it as a decimal because sometimes people just can't be bothered doing it all as an exact answer. They just want to do it on the calculator, which is absolutely fine. To do decimal places, 14.57. Just be careful if you're doing it on your calculator that you don't get a rounding error by rounding something earlier on. You use the answer button. But yeah, you should get this, 14.57. So well done. If you did get that, we'll put a box around just so it's clear. If you enjoyed this problem, uh, make sure you like the video and you can subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos because I put a new video up every single week, new problem solving video. I hope you enjoyed that one and I will see you next week for another problem. Till then, bye bye.